Back in 2008, Californians voted yes to a bold vision. The first high-speed rail line in the U.S., which would fly passengers from San Francisco at speeds of over 200 miles per hour to Los Angeles in under three hours. No traffic, no airports, just clean, fast, modern transit like what other developed countries have already built for decades. The plan sounded amazing. It was supposed to cost $33 billion and be finished by 2020, but now it's 2025. The price has ballooned to $128 billion. The project is still unfinished and only a small section is under construction. So what exactly is happening to California's bullet train? Why is this train taking so long and costing so much? Let's find out in today's episode. To understand what went wrong, we first need to understand what the project was trying to do and why it had strong support in the beginning. To be clear that the idea behind California's high-speed rail was great, California is a large and densely populated state, leading to high demand for efficient transportation between cities. And lots of people travel between big cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles. Driving takes at least six hours, and flying is fast but includes long lines and busy airports. A train that could make the trip in just two hours and 40 minutes seemed like an excellent solution. The project is led by the California High Speed Rail Authority. It is divided into two major phases. Phase one will build a 494 mile high speed rail line from San Francisco to Los Angeles and Anaheim, traveling through California's Central Valley. Eventually, phase two will extend the system further north from Merced to Sacramento and south from Los Angeles to San Diego, bringing the total route to over 770 miles, more than 1,200 kilometers, with 24 stations across the state. Until now, the main focus has been on completing the initial operating segment, a 171-mile stretch between Merced and Bakersfield in the Central Valley. This portion represents about 35% of the full Phase 1 route. With 119 miles, 192 kilometers, already under active construction, the iOS is expected to begin service between 2031 and 2033 at a projected cost of 28 to 38.5 billion dollars. Beyond transportation, the project aims to boost economic growth as well. It has helped over 900 small businesses and created more than 14,000 jobs in the Central Valley. This effort is transforming local economies. Environmental benefits are another key goal. By reducing highway traffic and short flights, CAHSR will help lower California's carbon footprint. A round trip between San Francisco and Los Angeles by train will cut emissions equal to burning 90 liters of petrol or 88 kilograms of coal. What started as an exciting idea is now often called a multi-billion dollar nightmare. So what's California's high speed holding back? In one word, cost. The price tag for the first section, just 171 miles between Merced and Bakersfield, was estimated at $6.2 billion in 2008. Today, that number has ballooned to $30.5 billion. These financial and planning troubles have drawn federal attention. In June 2025, the Federal Railroad Administration, FRA, under Trump, threatened to cut $4 billion in federal funding. Their warning, California high-speed rail, no viable path. The worst overruns that there have ever been in the history of our country. Or, train to nowhere, with too many delays, too few results, and not enough credible planning to justify the spending. Now, the California High-Speed Rail Authority has just 37 days to respond, or risk losing those critical funds. Land acquisition has been a slow and messy process. Even though nearly all the land has now been secured, early delays, some starting back in 2013, slowed everything down. Utility lines, legal hurdles, and paperwork held things up for years. Every delay made the project more expensive. Then there are the physical challenges. California's landscape is tough. The train has to cross earthquake zones, tunnel through mountains, and climb steep slopes. Building a 13.5-mile tunnel through the Pachico Pass, the longest in the project, is no small task. Even a simple underpass in Fresno had to be redesigned nine times to meet freight rail requirements. Legal battles have also played a big role in the delays. 
For years, lawsuits from local groups challenged the train's routes and environmental impact. Some of these only ended in 2022. On top of that, the project still faces political opposition. Some lawmakers say the funding isn't stable. They point out that a large part comes from California's cap-and-trade program, which could end in 2030. And when it's not politics or planning, nature gets in the way. Flooding in 2023 paused construction in the Central Valley and caused more delays. People living near the construction zones have faced noise, dust, road closures, and disruptions to their farmland. So what can be the next for California's bullet train? Countries like Japan, France, and China already have fast, reliable trains. But in the US, we mostly invest in highways and airports, even though traffic is terrible and flying is stressful. This high-speed rail was supposed to be a game changer, fast, clean travel between major cities. But with so many delays and rising costs, people are wondering, will it ever really happen? What do you think? Is it still worth it? Will we ever finish this train? Or is the US just falling behind? Drop your thoughts in the comments and see ya.